The time in Israel, in Palestine, in the Holy Land, historic Palestine, has reached an historic crisis. We get used to the idea that bad news come from that part of the world. Christians in Palestine say that things on the ground worsen with each passing day. To many, it has become stale news to learn that the situation in Palestine is deteriorating. A deterioration that has seemingly become normalized as if it is an unstoppable, normal process of history. In our experience and assessment thereof, Palestine and Palestinians could just as well be entering or have already entered an historically definable end game phase towards the successful completion of the Zionist apartheid project of, apart of occupation, namely the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians from their homeland. One of the consequences of such population transfer would be the removal of the Christian presence of the Holy Land and particularly the presence of the descendants of the first Christians. It is not a Christian issue, it is a Palestinian issue. And in view of a number of things that we will raise here, we felt it important that some voice, some message, some symbol, some signal need to go out that the Christians will not, will not, should not stand for this. Not in South Africa and not as South African Christians. We therefore, as a group of, I'm, 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 I'm humbled and surprised by all these titles that I was given here, um, but we just a number of ordinary Christians in South Africa who wish to signal this with others and call others also to stand with us. We therefore produce a, a document which you will, if you have the courage to, to take with you home and, and, and read it. So I will not read that. I will talk about it and talk to that. It is called a commitment from South African Christians confronting Israel's endgame for Palestinians. A journey in love, compassion and hope in pursuit of a just peace, freedom, dignity, security and democracy for all in historic Palestine. We start with a bit of a reflection of a portion from the, what we call in the Christian tradition the Old Testament from the prophet Habakkuk where he complains and he says, Lord, why do you allow me to see injustice continuously? The response of the Lord was not recorded, but I think it might have been because, my son, because you haven't practiced to see injustice. Your eyes are hurting. It's like when you wake up in the dark and go out in the light, it hurts. The truth hurts. Nevertheless, see it. For us, the crisis is four elements, and we don't say that that is the only, but this is how we try to understand this. First thing, Palestinians and Palestine, and even Palestinian Christians, are facing the end game of the phase Endgame phases of ethnic cleansing. In sport, in box, it says, go for the kill. That's the last moment. You can do this and that and the other, but the last moment turn, turns up and say, go for the kill. This is it. End the game. Israel is in self-destruction mode. The world, South Africa, the Christian community says, crisis? What crisis? For Christians, we say, whatever is happening there, the Christian message is being dishonored, discarded, disregarded, and in street lingo, rubbished by us as Christians. 
We understand that this is heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching news to hear, but we have to carry this news. We also are aware that there's a stuckness in this situation. A stuckness in the sense that we want to play politics as usual and see if politics as usual will solve it. It's almost this juvenile school boy, boys games. Play it over and over again and want different results. That's madness. Something completely out of the ordinary has to happen here. We have no final answers, yet this little statement, which is a work in progress, is not cast in stone of whatever size. It is a journey for us to explore what does it mean to have a journey of love and compassion and hope in this for us, together with everybody else. The journey for love in love and compassion in hope is first of all for ourselves. What does it mean for us? How is it possible for us to be the change that we want to see? That love and compassion in our engagement here tell us us what is it that we need to do? That love and compassion must help us to, to pierce the, 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 the illusions, the smoke and mirrors to see the truth. To guide us in how we deal with this, what we deal with this, and guide us, us all in what is the future that we are talking about. That is our journey in love and compassion. We were inspired by exactly, and it was mentioned here, the Palestinian Kairos document. Please read that. That document in Palestine has been used also in the Muslim community as it is in the Christian community. Powerful. Because the Palestinians dared to say that there is faith, hope, and love in a place where faith, hope, and love is hardly recognizable. We are here, therefore, as South African Christians also to hold up their hands. Why we do this? Why we do it now? We know in general the big context, but why Nakba Day? Why choose Nakba Day to do this? Because the Nakba Day and the protest here is the encapsulation for us of what is happening there in, the, in, the, in this historic situation. Many prefer not to acknowledge that and see this. Others have no choice. Their bodies say, this sits in my body. You've heard the, con the, 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 the tear. So our journey in love and compassion says, okay, what is, what is happening here? You heard the testimonies of people say we were caught up in all kinds of narratives. What is, what is happening here? We realize, obviously, and we have been involved in this for a while, there's no, it is not just a mere animosity about people who have you know, issues with each other. In, in the Jewish community, I think it's called frebeling. Am I right? Just sort of, you know, you keep on quibbling and more. What we are facing here is a crime. We are at the scene of a crime that is busy happening in front of our eyes. The crime with an oppressor and the oppressed. This is not fluffy, Viva Na Mandla rallying stuff that we are talking about here. These things have got names in law. And they are defined in law, international humanitarian law. They are called colonialism. It is called apartheid, the crime of apartheid. It talks about the illegal military occupation. It is a crime. It is not just a, a slip in judgment. It is about ethnic cleansing. And this is the Nakba for us, our understanding. The Nakba that started before 1948 and the Nakba that has been told here that took place in 1948. The, the facts and figures have been mentioned here. Today, the Nakba continues. The brutal, now listen, systemic and systematic race-based discrimin discrimination against Pal Palestinians. In international law, that thing is called apartheid. South Africa does not hold the intellectual property right on the word apartheid and the crime of apartheid. 
apartheid, South Africans can therefore also not say this is what apartheid should be and that is not apartheid. A crime by different means and by different actors remain a crime. If you choke somebody to death or you shoot somebody to death, it's still in, in law, it is murder. So whatever the differences and, and similarities are, it still remains that crime in law and we need to take that more serious. So, we have to acknowledge together that Israel is a colonial apartheid state. In love and compassion, we have to say this, even how difficult it may be for others. Moreover, ethnic cleansing is, in, is so essential for the, for, uh, for the successful completion of this project on two things. One, it is about land and to remove people without the right of return. Not that they don't have it, it is denied. Anybody else can return, not the Palestinians. Moreover, it is not only just to keep people away from the land, it is to destroy and destruct a society, a culture, and as it was said here, to remove the memory. That is what Lubia, amongst others, was also about. We now stand at this venture, this moment in history, by not only Palestinians, others as well, but at least for us as Christians, our Christian brothers and sisters say, we are in this moment, the final stage is the end game. And the world and the Christian community has conveniently ignored that cry from the Palestinian Christians. We haven't heard that, and therefore also we say, we need to bring this out. Where does this apartheid exist and this colonial apartheid exist, this Israeli uh, apartheid? It's in what they call Israel proper, it's in the West Bank, it's in Gaza, it's everywhere. Simply because the type of loyalty, of association with Israel is so deep emotionally, existentially faith and the support thereof becomes global. It becomes international. Israeli apartheid is a global phenomenon. Thereby, we all have to look at the way that we are accomplices in this as well. South Africa. Let us look at the complicity. South Africa, this is what we're beginning to say. South Africa, under the apartheid regime, was hand in glove Verwoord was reported to say, apartheid is an is uh, Israel is an apartheid state. And nobody complained about it at the time. Now, all of a sudden, it becomes anti-Semitic. We draw our, the Palestinians draw so much inspiration and, and I can only convey that kind of thing and I'm not speaking on their behalf but what we hear is that the, the Palestinians have so much expectation and inspiration from what happened in South Africa. Yet, we have to say, have to say this in love and compassion to each other. Our country, post-apartheid, our government, Political parties, civil society, business, educational institutions, sport, media, churches and others. We are not doing what is expected from us historically, our historical responsibility. We are not admitting to the fact that Israel is an apartheid state. It doesn't have to be like South Africa. And it shows in two ways. One, South Africa is not known to be a major force in, in dealing with this apartheid situation. It has been said here as well. Moreover, it cannot be more visibly shown as what is happening in Lubia, where our flag, our name, South Africa Forest, and everything is associated with ethnic cleansing of those Lubians. Moreover, and this is one that I have to bring out here, and we have to let this go, uh, come to the surface, our name, our flag, our logos, and so, is next to the Jewish National Fund, the KKL, Karen K. 
Okay, Metle Yisrael. I hope I pronounced that one properly. The Jewish National Fund's job is to hold land, appropriate land, by whatever means, for exclusively for Israeli Jews forever. Nobody can take it out. Palestinians cannot even buy land back together, even if they've lost it. Lubia, where our flag is, does not belong to Palestinians in perpetuity, according to their constitution. It is therefore not a, just a Jewish issue there, it is a South African issue that we have to face. And we have, as South Africans, have to make restitution to them at least, and therefore bring the whole thing into, uh, into our scope. Finally, I just want to talk about, we as Christians also have to talk about our Christian complicity in this whole thing. Yes, when we step into that, it is not just, you know, down with apartheid and that, that. We are deeply linked to that land and the history of the land where Jesus was and where he walked. But we also enter that with many scandals to our name. The scandals of the Crusades, the scandals of Islamophobia. We have to deal with that. We also have to deal with other people of the land, the Jews. Our, our complicity in the atrocities that the Jews faced over centuries in the name of Christianity. When are we going to face the Jews and say in a concrete way, we are sorry? The ghettoization, anti-Semitism, the expulsion, the physical persecution and the pogroms. And this makes a cynical thing when Israeli government goes into a pact with Zionist Christians in support. Where the Zionist Christians say, we want all the Jews back and then they must come Christians and then Jesus will come. I, 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 sorry, I don't understand that. Somebody will have to explain that to me. That's the scandals that we sit with. Today, we sit with the scandal of our lack of justice, sense of justice, our silence, our neutrality, our balanced approach, the biblical justification and support for Israel, regardless of what they're doing. And the Christian community worldwide is currently the greatest supporters of the state of Israel. That brings about a whole layer in consciousness in societies which make it almost impossible for even hard facts to come to people's minds. The result is that, and it was said here, and thank you Farid for that one as well, we ourselves put the possibility to believe the gospel, the credibility, and the integrity, the truthfulness of the gospel at stake ourselves. Don't need anybody else to do that. Also the witness of the Christians there. When did Palestinians become Christians? Um, they were the first Christians. We came from them. Their presence is threatened. And their credibility to say, here is the good news, and say, no, 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 no. The good news is not good news. The news that you bring in terms of what the global Christianity is doing is a harbinger of death and destruction. This is what the Christians there are also saying. And we say that despite, despite the fact that we in South Africa had an intense faith struggle about this, black South African Christians had to struggle with the fact, here is my apartheid experience, here I'm a Christian, what must I do with it? White South Africans from the lager and elsewhere in white privilege had to struggle with this. We are white, we are Christians, and this happened in our name? Does that sound familiar? We have a few messages for a few in that part of the land. First of all, as Christians in South Africa, Palestinians. We acknowledge, acknowledge and can no longer deny the 70 years of Nakba both locally and internationally. We support the Great Return March. We apologize that despite 
despite of your support to us and our struggle, we haven't done what we should do. We are inspired and stand by you, by your sumut. This is courageously have this existential thing inside it about non-violence. I don't understand that, but thank you for that. And we stand by you and we ask you, hold us to account for not standing to you. Palestinians and many in solidarity with Palestine, we applaud so many brave efforts there. Jews and even in the South African Muslim community, thank you for bringing this to our attention. All these efforts start showing, now listen what we say. All this starts showing now because, as we say, the dark hour before the dawn is a self-created destruction. We are concerned, we are concerned also about what does this do to fellow human beings, Jewish Israelis? As much as apartheid, colonialism, and all of this has to end, they are still also fellow human beings, family. In that we have to caution ourselves, and please, here is a very uncomfortable message also for ourselves, that we need to hold the visions of a just peace much more louder and bigger in our mind than the injustice that sit in our faces and in our bodies. Yes, they said it. Yes, it is pain. But it cannot be left unchecked because what happens, and it happens all over the world, is that we internalize that what we are against because it sits in our bodies. That when we freedom come and we have power, what do we act out? That what we have internalized. I say this as an Afrikaner, the English, the British did certain things to us in 1948 incidentally, what do we do to fellow South Africans? Liberation heroes become dictators. Israel is using the experience of the Holocaust and other things as a way also to punish the Palestinians. And that possibility is sitting in all of us. We cannot allow history to repeat itself. Our children and our grandchildren will have to shame us if we don't stop it now. The last thing, and this is where we say that to all of us, for the sake of history, we hear our Nelson Mandela say, and I'm not going to try to use his voice, but you will hear his voice if I say, he said, never, never, never again. What does it mean? It is not just a struggle, no, 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 never again for, for, for blacks. Never again, for that matter, for Jews, for anybody else. Never again for Afrikaners who were in the concentration camps. <coughs> what he says is, watch out, that sounds like Bishop Tutu. What needs to be broken and what we are activism in our politics is about to break the cycle of history that brings the oppressed again, oppressor, opp oppressed become the next round of oppressors. That we must check the health of our activism and our politics as well. There is a window of an op opportunity still in historic Palestine for this part of the world to be this blessing to the world. And we say, with this I end, a new world, a new earth, a new humanity, a new historic Palestine is possible. Because that dream, that ideal sits in the hearts and the brave longing of many. We say, we want to step with them into that dream and say, wake up, dream. <laughs>